Hi all. So I've been reading this book called To the Rescue of Art by Rudolf Arnheim. And there's a lot of brilliant ideas in here, but I wanted to just bring one forth in the form of, I'll read a little bit, an excerpt from the text, and then kind of break it down because it, it just really struck me in terms of um, a validating point to think about and to note. So I will read this quote and then I will kind of unfold it a little bit so that it makes a little more sense. The image proposes, the medium reacts, not always favorably. It makes objections, suggestions, and it also su surprises. The artist has much to learn about getting along with the materials of her trade, because nowhere does the infant's initial illusion of omnipotence seem to survive more naively than in the artist's trust in her own power. As the uncontested sovereign in the realm of her imagination, she finds it all the more difficult to cope with what Freud called the reality principle. Works of art are the adult's transitional objects par excellence. So what's being addressed here? I think the thing that really caught me was this idea of the objects having a life of their own. Objects and materials have their own qualities. And when an infant comes into the world, there's an undifferentiatedness there's just not that distinction between world out there, world in here. When that distinction begins to be developed, it actually is an early trauma or a, a jolt to the infant psyche to start to realize that there are these outside objects and they don't necessarily correspond with what I want. They don't behave necessarily with what I think should be. And this is obviously an experience that follows with us our entire life. We have an idea of how we want reality to be. And then there's other people and beings, but also other objects. There is a spectrum of objects. Some of them are fairly easily amenable to our will. So I think of a spoon usually does pretty much what I want. For a baby, that might be a little different. And then there are things that are more and more and more difficult to conquer. So just thinking about the so-called mastery of an instrument of an artistic trade. For the child, this transition, according to these psychoanalysts, is made easier by so-called transitional objects. A teddy bear, a blankie, a thumb. They're partially under the control, the will of the infant, but not entirely. So in this quote, he said that art, works of art are the, ob the adult's transitional objects par excellence. So again, the image proposes, this idea in your imagination proposes something, but then you have to make a relationship with the medium. The medium reacts not always favorably. So in engaging with your medium as an artist, there's this, this dissonance in trying to bring your, whatever your inspiration is, if it's a state of mind, if it's a particular atmosphere, if it's just a sense of an aesthetic sense, you have to struggle with the medium in order to bring this into birth. Arnheim differentiates between a maker of utilitarian things because there's already a template that exists. And so there's already kind of a lay of the land about how you're gonna interact with this object in order to get an expected result. But in art, as we're talking about it here, the result is much less prescribed by convention, less explicit, less finished, through the process, the medium is alchemized and meets the imagination and, and alchemizes into this art object. The artist has much to learn about getting along with the materials of her trade. Later on, he says, 
there's an exasperating discrepancy between the work as envisioned and its realization in the flesh. It seems that beginning artists think that this it's a, an issue that they're having because they're beginners and they don't they haven't mastered their medium yet. But I would propose that it doesn't matter how masterful you are with your medium, there is still always, you're still always proposing a conversation with a separate entity that exists in the world. Even if that entity is your own body, we all know that you would like to believe that you're a master of your body, but then you get sick. So I'll end with this last phrase that I thought was quite poignant. The incarnation of the artist's vision, his version of the Eucharistic miracle, is an indispensable value of his work. The Eucharistic miracle is, of course, when the wine and the bread are, through the process of the ritual, symbolically transformed into the body and blood of Christ. Through the, the atmosphere created in the ritual in the church, presided over by the priest, who would be the artist per se, the imagination meets with these materials, the bread and the wine, and they are transformed in the context of that ritual process into the body and the blood of Christ. They alchemize into something different. So the coming together of the artist's imagination with the material alchemizes into a new entity, which is the work of art. So there you have it. Please do leave any thoughts, questions, comments down below. I just think these ideas are fascinating to acknowledge because if you are an artist or if you struggle to understand art on any level, you'll be familiar with some of these questions about, you know, what is going on? Why does art represent a struggle that humans have willingly engaged with forever? And this, the, the meaning in this struggle of being an incarnated being and trying to make a relationship, an aesthetic relationship with the world to bring one's own meaning into the world through this conversation with reality. And conversations by definition are improvisational. You don't know where they're gonna lead. This is another being you're talking to here. You don't know what, where the journey is gonna end up. Please do like and subscribe. It helps me out and um, thank you.